evil averted. Can you imagine people sh shooting from different sides? Particular truck, no one wounded, no property lost. It can only be God. Miracle jobs, miracle alert now has entered into foreign currency, miracle alert. You understand? We are graduating. Hallelujah. Somebody will receive his own this week. Somebody will receive her own also this week. Today we have two miracle jobs. God will give you miracle job. If somebody can be far away in Nazareth State and get job in Abia State, if anything can happen, God will give you a miracle job. Somebody came here last week, took our communion, and bleeding stopped. Another one went to the hospital the same Sunday and was bleeding. And I was praying for her. The doctor was mocking her. How can your pastor be praying? We are talking about flood here. You are talking about bleeding. How can your pastor be talking about bleeding? This is flooding. <laughs> but before he could go and take the cotton wool and come back, the bleeding have stopped. <laughs> Whatever will not allow your joy to be full, I command it to be stopped. divine help here and there God is good to us can you imagine a student increasing his offering a student that should be looking for welfare had the word of God increase his offering now he said I'm sending money home God is no respecter of person in every nation everyone that fear at him and walk in righteousness is acceptable to him You will never lack. For all these and many more, because the ones that are not shared are more than the ones that are shared. Let's give him the glory due to him. Let's give him the glory due to him. He deserves our glory. He deserves our praise. Father, we thank you. Lord, we glorify you. Lord, we exalt you. Lord, we enthrone you. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we adore you. Lord, we enthrone you. Thank you for your strange eyes, strange hand, strange bread of your favor upon us. Your help answers to prayers. Lord, you have done all this well. Lord, you have done all this well. We give you glory. We give you praise. Blessed be your name, Lord. Take all the glory and honor. Be thou exalted, O Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. My hallelujah belongs to you my hallelujah belongs to you you deserve it you deserve it you
the presence of the Lord and help me welcome your neighbor to the left, to the right. You are welcome to the presence of God. This is your own service. Hallelujah. Now, this is a covenant day of fruitfulness. It's also a special anointing service. And our operation Andrew Sunday. You may have come with your point of contact. Maybe clothing for your miracle babies or your point of contact for your business. Please drop it on this anointed ground. Power of God will be meeting from here and such will turn to a testimony for you. Remember the word of God for us this month is I am for signs and for wonders. God of heaven will not only be making you a signs and wonder, Father's blessing will come upon you today. We've been joining in a series commanding signs and wonders from the platform of revelation, uh, revival. Commanding signs and wonders from the platform of revival. So we're looking at part 3B here. I encourage you to please get the teaching on the first service today and all other Sunday services. They're all making for a complete package. Now, being a covenant day of fruitfulness, come with me to Deuteronomy 7 13 to 14 as I take my test. Deuteronomy 7 13 to 14. If you are there, let's read together one to go. And he will love thee and bless thee and multiply thee. He will also bless the fruit of thy womb and the fruit of thy land, thy corn and thy wine and thy oil, the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep in the land which is where unto thy fathers to give thee. Thou shalt be blessed above all people. There shall not be male or female barren among you or among your cattle. Say with me, I'm not barren. I can never be barren. I will never be barren. Why? The scripture says so. There is none barren here. Circumstances of life may have called you barren, like they called Elizabeth. Elizabeth that was called barren. God didn't call her barren. Life gave her battle. I don't know what circumstance is speaking to you, but hear me, you are not barren. There is no barren person here. Your business cannot be barren. The work of your hand cannot be barren. In the name of Jesus. Because my Bible told me that you are blessed above all people. There is no unbeliever to envy. There is no one to envy. Tell me I'm blessed above all people. And scriptures cannot be broken. And God cannot lie. I am blessed above all people. So in the fruit of the womb, you are blessed. In the work of your hand, you are blessed. In your academics, you are blessed. In your finances, you are blessed. Concerning your children, blessed children. <laughs> <laughs> Everything about you be speaking blessing. No female, no male barren here. Not even your cattle, which is your business. The work of your hand. The last dryness you suffered will be the last forever. Genesis 128. And God blessed them. What did God do? God does not cause. God blesses. Do you know that even when Adam sinned, God didn't cause Adam. God caused the ground. Check your Bible. And God blessed them. What did God do to them? Today also he's blessing you. Yeah. Tell me I'm blessed. I'm exceedingly blessed. <laughs> God bless them. And God said, the blessing of God is communicated with words. And what is the first blessing? Be fruitful. You can't be fruitful without being seedful. That's why that woman came here. I said, Fallopian 2, just about a month ago, she stood here. Fallopian 2, but no Fallopian 2. 
she had from this mouth God sent me to restore you and she said I take that restore fallopian tubes that were removed by surgical operation from issue of atopic pregnancy notwithstanding she got her baby boy because you cannot be fruitful without first of all being seedful <laughs> whether fallopian tube or no fallopian tube eh? <laughs> you are sinful. We have seen people without womb conceive here and give birth. There is no medical, no spiritual, no biological complication that is too strong to keep you barren. And I can add QED, what Eram demonstrandum, if it's a mathematics. <laughs> Nothing will stop your fruitfulness. In the name of Jesus Christ. And God said, and I'm saying to you, be fruitful. Yeah. Multiply. Yeah. Replenish the earth. Yeah. Subdue it. Yeah. Have dominion over the fish of the sea. Yeah. And over the fowl of the air. Yeah. And over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Yeah. Hear me? There is nothing too hard for God to do. Some of these things we are already witnesses to them, so there's no need to talk too much. So the second of September 2019, that was the first time I was fully in charge here. And I was speaking here. Somebody was in this church, came for the very first time, all the way from Abuja, 16 years in marriage. And I was saying something like play that the woman is here, 16 years in marriage, you have issues in your home, God is going to settle the issue, God will give you your children. She took those words back home. <laughs> The short of it is that before the second half of 2020, she got twins. Say with me, twins. Two boys. After 16 years. We have had on this altar just about a month ago. So somebody stood here and said, God gave them a child after 14 years. These things are not calculations, sir. If God can visit somebody of 16 years, your own three months is not a problem. So why are you crying everywhere, weeping? I say, God, can't you say, Pastor, the way it is now, I don't know whether I'm barren. Three months. <laughs> Who's seen God give miracle jobs here, like water? Today, nine, this service, two. Somebody came in here, receive a testimony. After prayer was made for him. The same day, the same day, was on a Monday. The same day, he got a job. The job he applied for says, made the interview, they didn't call him. That same day, they released a job to him. And he shared his testimony. That's why you must share your testimony. Help me tell you, you must share your testimony. Because when you are holding your testimony, you are denying somebody else his own. Because somebody can key to your testimony, put his anchor on your testimony, or hook to it, claim it, dive into your testimony to get his own or her own. Now, after sharing that testimony, another person had the testimony in this altar and said, Ah, ah, this brother's case is like my own case. And those are in like, like, like in Lego, in, in a Lego system. There are what you call decided cases or cases of precedent. You can rely on them as evidence, as a strong reason to bring before your judge. And God is the judge of the whole earth. So when you hear the testimony of the others, you can rely on it. God, if you have done this one, you can do my own. And he came with that faith and came to the office here. Prayer was made. Within two weeks, his own job was released. But God added Jarrah to it. As he was celebrating that job, they promoted him before he resumed. That's the first time I will hear that kind of testimony before in my life. I don't know if you have heard before. That somebody has not resumed work, they promote him. Even some have worked for 10 years, no promotion. <laughs> what can you not do for me? <laughs> There's nothing he cannot do, sir. That is why I know your own case is settled. <laughs> Be fruitful! <laughs> Be promoted! <laughs> Be lifted! <laughs> In the name of Jesus! <laughs> See this good news. Leviticus 26, verse 9. For I will have respect unto you. Say with me, do it, Lord. And make you fruitful. 
You know your problem? You've been trying to make yourself fruitful. Tell God, make me fruitful. <laughs> he said, it is my will to make you fruitful. It is, so any prayer for fruitfulness is the will of God. And when you pray according to his will, he hears and answers. For I will have respect unto you and make you fruitful and multiply you. So where you are today will be the least place you will ever be. The Lord God of your father multiply you a thousand times more. In your business, in your career, in the work of your hand, be multiplied a thousand times more. And I will establish my covenant with you. Because of that, he said, you will eat the old store and bring forth the old because of the new, which is abundance. Abundance. The new ones will come. He said, this old, just go away. <laughs> you know, you have some supermarkets, do some, some correct shops. You know, there's what you call sales. When they discover some clothes are getting old and they, they just bring it and just push them out. They are blocking space, bringing new stock. And sell it at cheaper way price. And some people they run for that one. That's the only one they go to buy. From now you'll be buying correct things in Jesus' name. You know that kind of thing. They just buy it after some two months. The leather has peed. No. From now you'll buy correct one. In Jesus' name. Not be praying until there's sales. Now looking for where there's free sales like that. No. Because of some people don't understand their right and their privilege. Did you see the drama of the Copper's Fellowship? When you understand your right and your privilege, you take what belongs to you. Fruitfulness belongs to you. Honor belongs to you. Dignity belongs to you. Prosperity belongs to you. Sound hair belongs to you. Take what is yours! In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hear me, what is impossible with men is not impossible with God. There's no impossibility in the hand of God. Luke 137. For with men it may be impossible, but not with God. Which means that your issue is not impossible. Please don't close the case. Do you open the case with God today. In Jesus' mighty name. Now remember, we are in a season of revival, and that's God's agenda this season for us. And that's why we must remain spiritually awake to partake of what belongs to you in revival. One of the things that pertain to you in the season of revival is fruitfulness. What is a revival? A revival simply is the move of the Spirit of God ordained to terminate all frustration and afflictions of God's people. Barrenness is part of those afflictions. Sickness is part of the affliction. Loneliness, sorrow of heart, depression is part of that. A revival is a move of the Spirit ordained to terminate all frustration and afflictions of God's people. Today, God will undo all that afflicts you. Remember, Zephyr 3, 17 to, 9, to, to, to 20, he said, The Lord our God in our midst is mighty. <laughs> he will undo all that afflicts you. So, everything the devil has done to make you see barrenness, God will undo it today. When God ends your frustration and affliction, what happened? He turned them to testimonies. He turns you to an envy of your world. You may not look like it right now, but very soon they'll begin to envy you. Please, when they begin to envy you, don't cry. It's part of the blessing. It's part of the blessing. I've told us here before, if they don't envy you, you are not blessed. And you cannot be blessed without being envied. It's part of it. Our father Isaac went forward. He grew strong and went, was strong and went forward. And became great. The Philistines envied him. You can't be doing well without them envying you. It's part of the blessing. Part of the blessing. So in this season of revival, God will shift you forward. Somebody is here today from now. Your smell shall be like the smell of the field. Bless of the Lord. That anywhere you enter, blessing will come. So how do we know we are in a revival? How do we know? How do we know we are in a revival? We have seen some in the first service. Number one, I want to say here is when going to church becomes a way of life. 
when going to church becomes a way of life, you know you're in a revival. But if you are dragging your feet anytime you are going to church, then you are not revived yet. <laughs> you know what the psalmist said is I want you to tell us one. I was glad when they said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. David was going to the house of God ten times a day. Ten times, three times to pray, seven times to praise, and he will see half time to share the testimony of God before kings. That's at least 11 times. <laughs> Psalm 84, 1 to 7. Say, How amiable are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts? My soul longed, yea, even fainted for the cause of the Lord. My heart and my flesh crieth out for the living God. Yea, the sparrow had found an hand house, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young, even thy altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house, in power to succeed, in power to prosper, in power to advance, in power to be fruitful, are those that dwell in your house. They will be present thee. They will still be present thee. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee, in whose heart are the ways are the ways of them who passing through the valley of Baca make it a well. The rain also fill the pools. They go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appeared before God. Zion is our strength renewal center. In Reader Digest, a magazine that has been there for more than 70 years. In the May edition of 2001, go to any library, search for what I'm talking about. Some unbeliever doctors made a research and they came out with these three things. Number one, that believers that go to church regularly say, Don't fall sick. Why would they fall sick? That is, is, is Zion, they remove all the yama yama. That's the strength renewal center. He said, if they fall sick, they don't stay as long as those that don't go to church regularly. One week out of church makes you weak. <laughs> and number three, they said they add seven years to their lifespan compared to those who don't go to church. Make a choice. These unbeliever doctors that made that research and it was published in Reader's Digest. Such people don't write rubbish. Zion is a strength renewal center. So if you see yourself dragging, that following you up, deacon, elder, pastor, that following you up, church worker, church member, that following you up to go to church, is even junior that will remind you, Daddy, today is Sunday. You say, Hey, we have my Bible. Something is wrong. You even knock junior's head. You say, We are all these children, you know they're here. We have my Bible. I kept it here. You don't even know where your Bible is. When going to church becomes your delight, then you know that revival has come. Do you know one thing? Some say, I'm so busy, I don't have time. It's a lie. You have time for whatever you want to have time for. Everyone will have time for what he loves. Those who like Niger beds, they will line up for Niger beds. Even if you flog them, they will go back there. Those who like football, even if they are playing at midnight, they will be awake to watch their team play, three of us. Those who like drinking, they have their own fellowship. Fellowship of bottles. Every evening, they gather. Director... He mean he's running. Let this say. They even said that of fingers. Don't sign this for us. Said, wait, keep it in view. Next tomorrow, he's running there to go and contribute his own quarter to somebody's force. And he will stay there till night. Those who like women, they will devote time for it. Those who like men, they devote time for it. For a balance, because they are manizers and womanizers. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you don't have time for God, you don't love him. And when revival comes, nobody will encourage you to have time for God. So check your, how you spend your time. Some can spend time on social media, on home video, from morning to night, 
part one, part two, part three, part four. They even get these people. You are stupid. You have not acted part five. <laughs> but to study, to pray, kingdom advancement prayer, to come to church, they come to church one minute late. This pastor, you are stupid. One minute. Do you know what? Do you know what, my time has value? Where will the value of the time be? Niger bet. Going to fellowship with bottle. May God give us understanding. Look at in the early church. Because there was revival. The Bible said they continued daily with one accord in the temple. Daily. Daily. They were coming to church. Daily prayer. Daily. Daily. So they said, you know, at the time came, they were sharing things in common. Because why wouldn't they have in common? You can't be with them in the presence of God and miss his presence. And they continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house. Did eat their meat with gladness and sick goodness of heart. Acts chapter 2 verse 46. Daily they were going to the temple. Yeah, some people only two times in a week. Even when they said they won't come. Now hear me. Check kids. Check this. In case you've not been coming for midweek service. Or even for prayers and all those things. Check it. Find out what you did that time. Just just try and analyze what you did that time. You discover you didn't even do anything. Maybe you are just there watching film and the time finished. You are there. Social media, Facebook, Instagram. Which one again? Twitter. You are there. The same one hour, 20 minutes, finish. And others are using that to build and invest something in their future. Chiburu and I say, Pastor, pray hot prayer. Help me tell you, never do something with your life. What is in revival for us? We have seen in the first survey that financial fortune is unleashed in the time of revival. Financial fortune. Don't you like financial fortune? When revival comes, God pours his blessing. He has pours a blessing upon his people. In daily church, none of them lacked. None of them lacked. None of them. He didn't even know who owes what. Because there was revival. In this service, I want us to see two things. Number one, that divine head is the lot of every engaging believer in a revival. Divine head is the lot of every believer in a revival. Every engaging believer enjoys divine head because you are an ambassador. And every faithful ambassador is head. Exodus 23, 23 to 26. Serve the Lord your God. He will bless your water and bless your bread. It is one thing to have bread. It's another thing for the bread to be blessed. It can only come through service. Serve the Lord your God. He will bless your water and bless your bread. He will take away sickness from the means of thee. If sickness is taken away at a matter from your life, what will remain? Heads. He will not allow you to cast your young. No miscarriage of any kind. Miscarriage of the womb. Miscarriage of destiny. Abortion of destiny. No near success syndrome. Nearly. Uh-uh. He will not allow you to cast your young. He will not allow you to be barren in the land. Which means fruitfulness will come in all you do. The number of your days he will fulfill. The number of your days he will do what? I know what that means. Longevity with prosperity. He will fulfill. God himself will be the one fulfilling the number of your days. Nobody will kill you before your time. You will not die before your time. Every appointment with death is disappointed here today. I command you bless. Your bread and your water bless. Your body bless. Your womb will not be too hot in the name of Jesus. Every every form of satanic no spam count, low spam count, I curse it in the name of Jesus. Whatever is standing against the work of your hand progressing, I command it to stop in the name of Jesus. Number two, every revival is a platform for the flow of the supernatural. When revival comes, God's people begin to flow in the supernatural. And you agree with me, the supernatural is far above the natural. 
Matthew 28, 18 to 20. And Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, All power is given to me in heaven and in the earth. All power. Say with me, all power. Is it like that in your Bible? If your Bible is like my own, it's written in red letter words. Those are direct words Jesus made. All power. If all power has been given to Jesus, which one is the devil using against you? The one you permitted him to use. That's why he say, he say, he say dream. He say, he say God, everything God tells me, he used to come to pass. What did God tell you? Only bad, bad thing. Accident. Death. Can't he show you that you are building schools and giving people scholarship free of charge? It is your power the devil is using against you. You are giving him the power to use it. Next time you see such bad dream, eh? if any dream you see that does not give you joy, that does not bring faith to you, that does not bring peace to you, don't even discuss it with anybody, not even your spouse. Discard it and say, devil, shut up, get out. And go your way. He doesn't like to be ignored. Ignore him. Eh? He shouldn't be cheating you again. He not say, he not carry chair, not stretch. He say, can, can you see, pastor, eh? And some people used to disturb us like that. So somebody would dream in the midnight, they would call pastor. Wake up. See the dream I dreamt now. They used to do that to me. Oh. Pastor, if you see the dream I dreamt now, eh? And he's calling in the night because it's so stupid dream. I, I just saw myself flying like this, eh? And I, I, I wanted to even shout G G G G G. I couldn't shout. I just said Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I said some funny funny things. Uh -uh. <laughs> Why? You that as God has sent Jesus, He has sent you. You have not sent less than Jesus was sent. And Jesus said, All oh, the power in heaven and the earth has been given to me. There's no one here that is that's born again that is sent less than Jesus was sent. Two times the Bible confirmed that. John 17, 18. John 20, 21. As the Father has sent me, so send I you. So we are sent the same way Jesus was sent. And Jesus was sent with all power. That's why as I'm talking to you now, no witch can look at these eyes. If it's the greatest witch in your village, you can't try it. You will bow. Because I'm sent the same way Jesus was sent. You must be conscious of your sins. Are you getting me now? Yes. That's why we can tell somebody, he's going to a job. I say, go there. He's going to be a Jesus. They will go there. I say, do you eat meat pie? So I eat meat pie. So I take meat pie. You pass. Go. Somebody can be in Italy now. I'll give him a job from here. From my office. I'll give you a job. Yeah. Because the heavenly controls the earthly. Get to understand it. You are not sent less than Jesus was sent, sir. So all this one, you are crying and running around. And he said, because one woman look at you with one eye. He said, Pastor, since that woman look me so now. And a notorious week, Pastor, you have to pray hard prayer now. We don't have Pastor pray. Oh. You don't need that. You don't know who you are. It's just like that drama we watch. They took his throne there. He was, they were dashing him food. Throwing, throwing things for him to eat. And he was happy. Anytime they throw it, we just rejoice. Hey! Hey! Where are you supposed to sit on the throne commanding? They're not dashing you. You're looking for TP. Looking for somebody that will give you recharge cards. Somebody that will give you house rent. You that's supposed to be dashing houses to people. Wake up. Say with me, I wake up. Uh -huh. Your blessing will not be denied you again. Jesus mighty name. So in the, in the time of revival, in the time of the walking in the supernatural, look at the apostles. You know, a time came. Look at this. A time came when they raised the man that was at the beautiful gate. Acts chapter 3. That happened in verse 3. In verse 3 to 6. Then in verse 16, they asked Peter, how did you do this thing? How did you? He said, no. You may think I'm wonderful. I'm not wonderful. I'm like you. It is faith in the name of Jesus that made this man whole and giving him perfect wholeness. Faith in the name of Jesus. Faith in the name of Jesus. A time came, they said, okay, if it is the name of Jesus, so stop preaching in that name. They want them to become natural like them. Stop preaching the name. <laughs> you know what they say? 
we cannot but speak of the things we have seen and heard. Judge you yourself. We rather obey God than men. Act of 4, verse 20. Now, in 23, they came and flogged them and said, Stop preaching the name. They, they know. They returned in their company, verse 23, after they flogged them. And they began to reason. They said, Now, we need to pray for more power. And they started praying in verse 29. God, behold, they are threatening. Set forth your hand to heal in the name of your Holy Son, Jesus Christ. By doing miracles, signs and wonders. And when they prayed, the whole place was shaken. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. And they ministered the word of God with great grace. And great power came upon them. Verse 23. Verse 33. Great power came upon them. Great power came upon them. Great power came upon them. After that, they couldn't stop them again. They became unstoppable. What you need is power. I've told you, if you are not empowered, you'll be overpowered. If you are not enabled, you'll be disabled. Power came upon them. Acts chapter 5, 12 to 14. You see, they began to do miracles. Miracles. Many miracles were done by the apostles. To the extent that Peter began to do what Jesus couldn't do. There is no day recorded that Jesus moved around and a shadow healed the sick. No. All of them were coming to touch the hem of Jesus' garment. In fulfillment of John 14 verse 12 which said the works I do you shall do and greater work than this shall you do. All Jesus needed was they were gathered from everywhere and come and touch his clothes. His clothes was coat of many colors because the person selling uh, <laughs> palm oil will come and touch. The one selling granite oil. The one selling uh, engine oil. The one selling uh, diesel. All of them we are touching. Mechanic will come and touch. Different colors. I believe his Dracula must have suffered a lot. Peter said, look, you don't touch me like that. You hear? If you are sick, line up. And as he was passing, his shadow was healing the sick. Jesus never did that. That's greater works. Now hear me. From now, you begin to do greater works. You begin to do greater works. If you check the ass of the apostles, it's one of the, it's the only Bible chapter or, or, or book that doesn't have amen. Amen means so be it. That is closing it. But Acts of the Apostle does not have Amen. Check your Bible. Check the last one, chapter 28. There is no Amen there. You know what means? The Acts of the Acts must continue. And it will not continue with any other person. It will continue with you and I. So from now, Acts will begin to continue with you. So great things will be recorded in your life and through you in the name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus' glorious name. And well, today is a covenant of fruitfulness. Remember, if you are born again, child of God, you are a seed of Abraham. Say with me, I'm a seed of Abraham. And if you are a seed of Abraham, you are redeemed to be fruitful. It's your right. Our God is a baby maker. You can't be a baby beggar. Our God is a husband giver. You can't be a husband beggar. Or wife beggar. No. We are saw in Deuteronomy 7 verse 14. Remember, he said, you are blessed above all people. And none shall be barren in the land. Galatians 3, 29. And if you be Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Look at the drama we saw here. It's a very big message. You are redeemed to be fruitful. You are the one supposed to be distributing fruitfulness. Like I said, I've done end of discussion. I've done my end of discussion. Hallelujah. As the types of fruitfulness, I may distribute on now. Glory to God. Yeah. My last child is my end of discussion. So I'm a distributor now. You are the one to be distributing that. That's why one day a, a man and a wife came all the way from Amadou Bello University J Hospital in Zaria. They brought a, a test and a report from a consultant, a gynecologist. Now, who told them, look, we are tired of eating your money. Oh man, you can't pregnant a woman. You don't have sperm count. So there's no need deceiving you. They looked one out. And at that instance, you know, the Holy Ghost, just like the choir sang, bred upon me with some insight. He said, how many, I asked them, how many sperm count did Mary use to conceive Jesus? None. Why? How did it happen? The power of the highest came upon her. I said, that power of highest is inside you. 
If the power of highest is inside you, you can't be talking of spam counts. Amen. You have all the counts. For the Bible said in Colossians 3 10, you are completing him who is the head of all principalities and power. You are a complete man, man. Pray for them. Nine months after. Spam count or no spam count. Baby boy. Baby boy. From that union. I've seen five broad turn to fine born. They said this woman cannot conceive because she has five broad. I say, sir, that five broad is turning to fine boy. And she conceived broad fine boy, not fine girl. Now hear me. Whatever they said is impossible. God will make possible in your life. Yeah. I want to share the testimony of how God helped us to be fruitful. My wife and I having our baby boy. And a woman had the testimony. That was in August 2013. She had the testimony. She has not menstruated for 23 years. 23 years. She has never menstruated. But she conceived and brought back twins. Now hear me. No case is impossible with God. You are a seed of Abraham. And if you are a seed of Abraham, conveniently you are qualified to be fruitful. Say with me, I'm fruitful! You have been redeemed from the cause of barrenness. Barrenness is a cause, but you have been redeemed. Christ paid the price. His hanging on the cross is to crush our causes. That's why he didn't die by stone. That's why he didn't die in the sheep. That's why he didn't die by them throwing him headlong. He has to go to the cross to crush your cause. Every cause of barrenness is crushed right now in the name of Jesus. A woman once came to me, doctors charged her 35,000, said because she cannot ovulate. Come and take drugs so that you can ovulate. She said, instead of giving doctor this money, I want to go and give it to my pastor. And she brought 35,000. Prayer was made for her, baby boy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Whatever is stopping your fruitfulness, I stop it today. In the name of Jesus. Please note that in as much as you are planted in the house of God, you will continue to bear fruits, even in old age. Psalm 92 verse 12. He said, the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. It shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that are planted in the house of God, verse 13, they shall, fat, they shall be fat and flourishing. Even in old age, they shall be what? Fat and flourishing. Fat and flourishing. Fat and flourishing. So don't tell me I've retired. You can retire. At one twenty, the, the, the Moses' body was was normal. His eye did not go dim. His teeth did not go out. His natural force did not abet. Which means if he wanted to give birth to a child, he will. I've told you the story of Pasadena. He died at one 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 four. At one one twelve, he remarried. And after the marrying, he went to buy baby things. You know what that means? Okay. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please note that joy and rejoicing is a spiritual requirement for fruitfulness. Joy and what? If you are not joyful, you cannot be fruitful. Whatever steals your joy has stolen your fruitfulness. Some people quarrel with their husband during the ovulation period. It's the devil that's manipulating you. They don't quarrel any other time. It's during the ovulation. That the only week that thing will happen. They will go and quarrel. After that, they go back to Mr. Uh, is it uh, we are now? Okay. Uh, <laughs> Jovites. They go there, join her together to go and eat. But when it's ovulation period, they will quarrel. Or the man will say, I'm tired. Whatever be manipulating your fruitfulness will command you to stop in Jesus' name. Some become bitter against each other. Look at Abraham. Until the Sarah, until Sarah's container changed, the miracle didn't happen. Remember, after Eli prophesied to her, he said, go and let your petition be granted. He said, her containers was no more sad. And she went back home and Ekana, the husband knew her and she conceived. Without joy, you are killing the seed within you. Even in natural times, you discover that even in, in, in terms of finances or blessing, anytime blessing wants to come to your hand, God will announce it with joy. Extraordinary joy. You start singing in the bathroom as a man. Without, so sometimes you feel it's like you dance without knowing. 
Woman, you are cooking in the kitchen. You start singing without nobody invited you to sing. Just watch that day. Something is about to burst forth. But that's also when the devil will come and cheat you and, and somebody say, didn't greet you. He said, why didn't you greet me? You have lost the blessing. Whatever sees your joy has stolen your blessing. When joy dries, everything dries up. Joy chapter 1 verse 12. Everything dries when joy dries. Look at Abraham. Even in old age, how did Abraham become fruitful? Abraham did not consider the deadness of Sarah's womb. Neither his own body that was dead. He was strong in faith, giving glory to God. He was still joyful. 25 years, he was still joyful. Giving glory to God. Why? He was fully persuaded, fully assured, fully convinced that what God has said, God is also able to perform. You need to be joyful. Help me tell you about be joyful. If you can't be joyful, you can't be fruitful. I can tell you that. If you, if you cannot be joyful, all this one you are carrying your face like Zuma Rock every time. Your face is looking like somebody that, ah, why? Some women tell you, Pastor, it's my nature. It's not your nature. It's stolen from the devil. It's only in hell that I have gnashing of teeth. In heaven, there is joy and rejoicing. Even when you get there, they'll see if we pray session, rise on your feet. <laughs> Everyone that is in line for miracle job, get your miracle job. Yeah. Everyone in line for miracle children, your case is concluded. Get your miracle children. Yeah. Watch, if I be a man of God in nine months' time, you are returning here with your baby. Yeah. We'll do that announcement on this altar in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. Don't look at the mouth, too. it may be too small. But I know the power back up. From five years, God has been with this mouth. It's only getting better every day. I told you the first day I came here. And you've been hearing the testimonies. One of the greatest testimonies you're hearing, Pastor say, Pastor say, Pastor say, Pastor say. And this one I said will come to pass in your life. Yeah. One day a woman came to me, blessed me with 20,000. And she, would, uh, before she could get out of the gate of the church, they were calling her for 99 million contracts. <laughs> before she could get out from the gate of the church, she ran back. Now hear me. This mouth I bless you. And I will also bless you as a father. Because today is Father's Day. I will bless you as a father. Every blessing, every blessing that release on you will stick to your life. Now hear me. There are some mouth that say something God stamps it to. There are some hands that come upon you. You become the head and not the tail. I'm not lying to you. Everything that has been declared upon you today, they will find practical fulfillment in your life. <laughs> now, we are going to pray in a short while and receive the anointing. But before we do, I want to give opportunity to everyone here that is not born again. If you don't have the life of Jesus inside you, you have no life. You are just existing. First John 5 12. He that had the Son had life, and he had, that had not the Son of God had no life. If you don't have life, how will you be fruitful? Answer me. Can a dead wood be fruitful? If you don't have life, you can be fruitful. Maybe this is your problem. You may have been in church, but you're not in touch. You don't have the life of Christ. It's the life of Christ that produces fruits. Somebody is here today who wants to say, Jesus, I want to be part of you. I want to be alive in you. I want to be born again. I want to be a child of God. As all eyes are closed, all eyes are close your heads about, put your hand on your chest, pray this prayer of salvation with me. Somebody is here also, you're struggling with certain evil habits, you know it. New Year resolution didn't help you, but Jesus can help you. Also, turn to him today, let him help you. Return to him, he will return to you. Put your hand on your chest and pray this prayer of salvation. Somebody gave his or her life to Jesus one day. Yes, you did, you genuinely did, but right now you are no more there. No peace, no joy. You know it. Things are going haywire. Return. He will return. He said, return to me, I will return to you. What you do with God determines what he does with you. Your proximity to God is determined by you, not by God. Draw near, I will draw near. Somebody is saying, how can I go? But, so they will look at me. No, no, no. You are not serious. If you know that your life is at stake, that without Jesus, you can't be fruitful, we, you will take that step. Now, as we pray right now, you are among this category of people I have mentioned, please put your hand on your chest, pray this prayer with me, sincerely I know you are a sincere person sincerely pray this prayer, say Lord Jesus come into my heart, be my Lord be my Savior, 
I believe in my heart, you are the only son of God. You died, you resurrected on the third day. Today, from my heart and with my mouth, I confess you as my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, write my name in the book of life. Wash me with your precious blood. Give me a new beginning. I am born again. I'm a member of the household of God. I am yours. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me in Jesus' mighty name. If you pray that prayer with me, sincerely wave your hand as a mark of surrender to Jesus wherever you are. Wave your hand to Jesus.